In 2055, a company uses time travel to offer time safari, which means people can go to the prehistoric ages to hunt dinosaurs. To avoid changing history, the company makes sure the clients stay on an artificial path so they won't step on anything. They only kill specific dinosaurs that were about to die of natural causes, and nobody is allowed to take anything back. Today's clients are a middle-aged man and his daughter, who are guided by Dr. Travis and a few company employees. Everyone is wearing special suits for the hunt that keep track of their vitals and have cameras to record the whole experience. When they reach the right spot, Travis makes the group wait patiently and reminds them that their guns won't fire until his does. At that moment they hear a mighty roar and the ground shakes under the stomping of a huge dinosaur. The beast runs toward the group, bringing down any tree on its way. The clients are terrified and want to shoot already, but Travis makes them wait until the dinosaur is close enough. At the last second, they all shoot together and the beast is quickly killed, its body sinking in the swamp. When they return to the present, the recording of this little adventure is played in an after-party hosted by the company CEO Charles. However Travis doesn't attend the party and stays in his lab working on the machine's AI called Tammy. Soon he's joined by employee Clay, who is also part of the Department of Temporal Regulation, a government agency that makes sure time-traveling companies are following safety protocols. Charles shows up to drag Travis to the party so he can use all his big science words to impress the rich people. The clients are also given the souvenirs from the trip, the suit and the disc with the recording of their adventure. Suddenly Dr. Sonia crashes the party and starts spraying everyone with red wine, calling it blood. Security comes to drag her away while Sonia keeps screaming about the dangers of time travel and the company ruining the future. Travis follows her out and learns that she invented the time traveling technology but Charles took the patent from her with a fishy funding contract. Sonia insists Time Safari will bring terrible consequences and can't understand why Travis supports it, so he takes her to a lab in the zoo. While playing a lion hologram, he explains that he works for Charles so he can study the DNA of extinct animals. Since they can't take samples during hunts Travis does a remote DNA reading of the dinosaurs, only getting a little bit at a time. Eventually he'll have enough information to reconstruct the whole DNA chain and bring extinct animals back into the world. Since they only hunt animals that were supposed to die from natural causes, Travis thinks they aren't alternating history, however Sonia insists this will only bring chaos and jeopardize the future. Meanwhile at the company lab, an employee is distracted and accidentally drops the cartridges of frozen liquid nitrogen, which are used as bullets during the hunts. The container breaks yet the guy puts it in the supplies machine, not noticing the nitrogen leaking on Travis' gun. That next day Christian and Ted sign up for a hunting trip and Charles takes them to the lab. Travis tells them about the technology and shocks Charles when he says it was all developed by Sonia. Next the clients are shown how to use the guns, which use frozen liquid nitrogen for bullets so they can dissolve later. This is part of the rules, they must leave nothing in the past and never bring anything to the present. They must always stick to the road, never step off, and never change anything. The clients are given special injections and once everyone is suited up, they step into the machine and are tightly held still so that the particle beam won't miss a single cell. Lights begin spinning around them and in just a few seconds, they appear in the past. As they walk down the artificial road, Ted is startled by something in the bushes and tries to shoot it, but the gun isn't working yet. The animal is just a little butterfly that flies away. The employees scold him, reminding him that the guns are off because of people like him. When they make it to the right spot the dinosaur quickly appears, however Travis gun fails to shoot and without it the other guns don't activate. Marcus takes Travis gun and starts working on fixing it, but he needs a moment. Travis takes out his flashlight and gets the dinosaur's attention, then he starts running down the road to make the beast follow him while telling the others to hide. The clients run while the dinosaur tries to bite Travis, who falls out of reach at the last second. Jenny yells too and the dinosaur almost eats her, however Travis uses his flashlight again to get it away from her. At that moment Marcus finishes fixing the gun and throws it at Travis, who drops the flashlight and uses the gun to kill the dinosaur with just a couple of shots. The flashlight rolls down the road and almost falls off, but Jenny catches it just in time. Afterward everyone regroups and confirms no protocols were broken, so now they can leave. None of them notice the muddy footprint on the road. Back in the present, the clients are furious and threaten to sue Charles, who starts manipulating them with pretty words. Instead of going through a scripted hunt, Ted and Christian survived an actually dangerous situation, which makes them cooler than every previous client. The duo calms down and accepts a drink. Outside a strange wave of wind goes through the city, very briefly cutting off the power. After work Travis goes home and notices it's hotter than usual. The next morning the temperature is even higher and news broadcasts report on tons of dead fish found on shores. Scientists discovered the UV count is also quite high, and Travis notices his houseplant has suddenly bloomed. On his way to work, Travis finds a crowd gathered around a wall because they can't stop staring at a pant that broke through with mysterious strength. Moments later Travis and the team are taking new clients to the past. To their shock, the dinosaur is still dead right where they left it. Suddenly the volcano in the distance erupts and everyone starts running back into the portal. Travis and Jenny jump in right before the ash can hit them both. Once they're back, they discuss what happened and assume that Tammy missed their entry point by 5 minutes, 
However Tammy assures them she sent them to the right coordinates. Clay announces the facility will be closed until further investigation is done and he'll report to the government, ignoring Charles' attempts to manipulate him into cooperating. Soon Tammy is shut down and the entire lab is full of agents. Travis is sure they made a mistake during the previous trip but Charles doesn't take him seriously. He leaves on a cab, but the trip is interrupted when a hole opens in the middle of the street. Another car falls into it first and Travis' cab tries to dodge, crashing against cafe tables instead. Thankfully people run out of the way just in time. Travis is also fine, so he approaches the hole and discovers it was caused by fast-growing plants. Afterward Travis goes to Sonia's building, where he finds a door also taken by plants. When he reaches her apartment, he finds the other tenants at her door protesting about the plant sneaking into all their apartments and blaming her for it. A frustrated Sonia opens the door window and threatens them with a gun to make them leave. Travis tries talking to her, however he's ignored. On his way out, he discovers the garden supply delivery service, so he takes Sonia's order and pretends to be a worker to be allowed inside. Sonia's apartment is full of plants, but they don't appear to be doing anything weird. Sonia finally realizes who he is and says she's been expecting him, then she takes him upstairs and makes him look through the window. Travis is shocked to see some kind of transparent wave hitting the whole city, which throws him off back to the lower floor. Sonia calls it a time wave. At that moment they hear screaming and when they open the door, they find a neighbor covered in bugs that are also taking over the corridor. Travis and Sonia run back inside, only to find more bugs in there. They start climbing up Sonia's body, so while she shakes them off Travis throws the fertilizer bag on the floor for her to stand on. Then Travis breaks a pipe and starts shooting water at the floor to open a path through the bugs. The water splashes on the tanks of oxygen and produces a spark, thus the duo runs out and jumps off the building to escape right before the tanks blow up the entire apartment. Travis and Sonia survive the fall by landing on a huge tree outside her building that wasn't there before. When they look around, they discover the whole city is destroyed. Sonia explains that changing something in the past doesn't affect the future all at once, the changes will happen slowly in a ripple effect. It started in this city but soon it will reach the rest of the planet. The plants are changing first, and the animals will follow with humans changing last. It may be a simple alteration like gaining an extra eye, or something bigger like becoming extinct. Afterward Travis and Sonia go to the company with a plan in mind, they want to go back in time to the moment Christian and Ted hired the hunt and prevent any mistakes. At first Clay doesn't allow it, but Charles changes his mind by reminding him that if they don't solve this, Clay will go down with him. Tammy is turned on again and Sonia works on minimizing any margin of error before Travis gets on it alone. To his surprise he isn't transported to the dinosaur era, instead he appears on a desert where a group of Native Americans almost run over him. Travis dodges the horse hooves by lying on the ground, and once the dust clears he discovers they were running away from the time wave. He immediately crosses the portal to return to the present and warns everyone about the time wave, but it's too late, the wave reaches the lab and tosses everyone back while destroying most machines and shutting down the power. Thankfully nobody gets hurt and they have a backup generator. Now they can see that plants have taken over the entire lab, and a quick look outside reveals the whole city is in the same state. Sonia realizes her machine can't jump through a time wave, that's why Travis wasn't able to go back to the Jurassic period. The wave creates a series of rings around each era and they're outside them. While Sonia tries to work on a modification for Tammy, the team watches the recording of the last hunt multiple times from different angles, but they can't find what they did wrong. Some hours later, Marcus finally finds their mistake, they came back weighing 1.3 grams heavier than when they left, which means someone took something. This doesn't make sense because the time machine has a biofilter that is supposed to sense that. Charles has no choice but to admit he turned off that filter a long time ago to save money because it used too much energy. Clay says he didn't know about this, but Charles' reaction indicates he's lying. The team proceeds to scan all the equipment but the results are negative, so the object must be on the client's suits. After lots of work, Sonia finally comes up with a possible solution. She'll send Travis to a year previous their mistake when the waves didn't exist yet, that way he can slingshot him to the right moment without resistance. This jump will consume most of his energy, so he'll only have around 20 seconds to fix what happened. To avoid wasting that time, they should find out exactly what happened first. The team begins gearing up to go looking for the clients. Sonia reminds them that plants and animals have been evolving differently for millions of years, so they should watch out for things like evolved dinosaurs. They leave in the middle of the night and begin crossing the park when suddenly they hear a noise. A quick shot is fired, but it turns out to be a simple chameleon-like creature that immediately runs away. At that moment they hear a very loud roar, so they keep moving. A little further into the park they find huge cobwebs and strange paw prints on the ground. As they keep on walking, they hear another roar and suddenly a whine wraps around Marcus, stabbing him with a bunch of thorns before dropping him. They can hear the roaring creature approaching, so the team quickly removes the thorns and helps Marcus walk to get away. Marcus can't feel his legs and concludes the thorns injected him with some chemical. A vine also grabs Lucas' gun, but he just pulls to recover it. Moments later they're suddenly attacked by a reptilian baboon, who jumps on Lucas and drags him away. 
Travis runs after them and starts shooting the beast, but his bullets do nothing except for angering it. The baboon jumps to attack again, but now his soft spot is exposed and Travis shoots there to finally kill it. Unfortunately its roar has gotten the attention of more baboons, so Travis and Lucas rush back to the group. They start running while shooting at the incoming creatures, whose numbers are too much to handle. Marcus can barely move anymore and tells the others to leave without him since he can die as a distraction. After the team leaves, Marcus keeps on shooting at the baboons to keep their attention on him. The thorn's poison is making him hallucinate his loved ones, so he dies with a smile on his face while the baboons eat him. Eventually the team reaches Ted's building, where they see a father and son sneaking out to go to the market. The duo is desperate to find food, however they're soon found and attacked by the baboons. Travis immediately runs inside and kills the first baboon by shooting his soft spot. He tries shooting the second one too, but it gets scared and disappears in the darkness. Afterward the team enters the apartment building and starts their search, seeing plants and refugees in every corner. They find Ted fighting with a neighbor over a fire he started in the room and he swears he didn't step off the path. They get his suit from the closet and scan every inch but there are no results, which means they need to find Christian next. Ted explains Christian's wife kicked him out, so now he's living in his office downtown. To survive the trip, the team decides to steal a car from the building's parking lot. A creature flies too close to the car, but thankfully they leave it behind and make it to Christian's place. Sonia and Travis go upstairs to look for their client while Lucas and Jenny stay to protect the car. The duo climbs the stairs, noticing venomous vines everywhere. There are also tons of bodies, it seems the venom made them go crazy and kill each other. Suddenly an old man jumps out and tries to shoot them, but he's out of bullets and runs away. Then Travis shoots a door open to find Christian, who immediately opens fire. Travis and Sonia hide until Christian stops shooting, and when they come closer they realize he's also infected. When they ask him about the suit, Christian goes crazy again and runs around the apartment while shooting his gun, killing a neighbor in the corridor. Travis carefully sneaks around until he can corner Christian, who panics and decides to self-delete. Afterward they search the apartment and finally find the cause for all this. Christian had stepped on a butterfly and brought its body stuck in his boot. Travis and Sonia rush back to the parking lot, where Jenny and Lucas are firing their guns to keep huge flying beasts at bay. When the team leaves in the car, the flying animals start following them and even break the rear window. Jenny and Lucas use the resulting hole to open fire and they shoot through the ceiling as well. A few animals go down, but one manages to break the roof and grab Lucas, taking him away to be eaten. The team is starting to lose hope but at that moment the time wave hits the area and sends the car flying right through the company's front door. Thankfully nobody gets hurt and the trio goes to the lab, which is covered in plants and has no power. The floor is flooded and Charles is dead in the water. Sonia can't work without power, but she grabs Tammy's hard drive and announces she still has a portal in her old university lab. Travis searches the lockers for his suit and finds Clay inside, hiding from a bunch of baboons currently sleeping on the ceiling. At first Clay refuses to go with the team, but after they leave, he changes his mind and tries to follow them. Unfortunately the baboons hear him and immediately surround him. Meanwhile the trio enters the subway station and starts walking on the flooded tracks, not noticing the creature following them. Moments later they find a crash train and get inside to cross it, however the door is locked. Before they can go back, the ceiling concrete breaks and crushes the other car, trapping the trio inside. As the water levels around the train continue to raise, the aquatic creature breaks a window and reaches inside to grab Jenny, taking her away. Then the water starts flooding the car and Sonia and Travis take a deep breath to dive in. Travis shoots a window and the creature bursts in, so Sonia swims through the window while Travis opens fire. However his gun is out of bullets, so he grabs his knife and starts stabbing the creature in the eye. When he tries to swim out too, the beast grabs his legs and begins dragging him to its mouth. Luckily the ceiling collapses again and the debris crushes the animal, killing it. An unconscious Travis floats around until Sonia comes to rescue him, taking him to the surface so he can breathe again. They're startled by the creature appearing again, however it's just its floating body. They swim out of the station and finally make it to the university, where they find the garden full of baboons. The duo rushes inside and locks all the doors, causing the baboons to start climbing the building to reach the windows. In the lab, they get Tammy working with the backup generator while the baboons keep pounding on the door. Travis gets into the time machine and Sonia sends him back at the same time the final wave hits the city, transforming her into a strange creature. The slingshot maneuver works and Travis is quickly tossed from one year to the other, avoiding the old waves. He finds the moment of his team panicking and gets Jenny's attention to tell her that the biofilter is off and that nobody must touch the recording except for him. Then Travis runs and slides down the path to pull Christian back right before he steps on the butterfly. Christian yells as he watches Travis disappears because the timeline has been corrected. Afterward Jenny tells Clay to turn on the biofilter and watches the butterfly fly away. When they return to the present, Jenny gives the recording to Travis and tells him what happened. A confused Travis leaves work, showing that the city is fine as always. Travis makes it to Sonia's place and gives her the disc so she can finally bring the company down with proper proof.
Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.